I'm sure a lot of people are aware that The Elder Scrolls isn't your typical fantasy series. There's a few obvious things to note, like the cat people and the lizard people. Even though a few series out there do that sort of thing, The Elder Scrolls really put their stamp on the idea in the minds of most people. There's stuff like the dwarven machinery, but there's tons of fantasy with some race with technology ahead of the rest of the world. So I could just jump into the deep end with the cosmic stuff like Chim or the Towers or whatever, or arbitrary stuff like the night sky not being real or you know, something like that. And then every normal person would click off the video, so instead I'm gonna cover the things in the series that are present in almost every generic fantasy and tell you how the Elder Scrolls puts their own special little twist on it. Dwarves. Now, I've mentioned before how the advanced technology isn't that crazy and stand out, but there's more to it than that. Uh, now, I'm sure you've probably rolled your eyes and thought, oi, this guy's gonna mention how the dwarves and the Elder Scrolls aren't actually shorter about how they're elves, too. Everyone knows that. And, and yeah, I should mention that, but, like, there's more to it. See, the orcs in the Elder Scrolls are definitely elves in the series, but they still look the part of orcs, and at first glance, they play the part of orcs, but we'll get to that later. But the dwarves in the Elder Scrolls are such a far cry from this, that even at a first glance, they just don't resemble them at all. See, unlike in other fantasy series, the Elder Scrolls dwarves are actually elves and, well, weren't actually short. But also, these dwarves aren't based on any Norse mythology or culture. No, no, these aren't tiny Vikings, no. These guys were like fucking Mesopotamians with magic steampunk robots, but without any of that nasty Victorian England part to it. I think the visuals they use are honestly the most unique thing about them. So when it comes to fantasy, the Elder Scrolls series never really stays in that Northwest European setting uh, where most fantasies start. Nope, the dwarves are from Iraq and we love them for it. Hell, the only reason they're canonically called dwarves is because there was uh, giants nearby who thought that they were a bunch of little cute baby people. Also, these dwarves don't act like your typical fantasy dwarves. They definitely aren't nice, friendly people who come and help you out on an adventure or, or let you stay in their cabin to hide from an evil witch, or whatever it is that Varric does. Uh, no. These guys were cold, unfeeling, like, magic scientists who'd totally risk their own life and end yours if it meant attempting to prove their own coolness to one another. I mean, these guys were building a, a giant god robot because they could. Also, I mean, like, unlike, you know, most fantasy dwarves, uh, the Dwemer are gone. Yeah, I don't know if you've noticed, but in most fantasy movies and games and books, uh, the fantasy aspects are actually present. Uh, yeah, no, the dwarves ain't coming back. Uh, you only get to talk to the dementia one and uh, a ghost every now and then. Hey, remember when I said we'd get to orcs later? Yeah, well, that's right now. Uh, so orcs, or Orsimer in this case, like I said, at first glance, seem like the same old, same old orcs from every other fantasy. Evil, dumb, green monster people who kill everything for some reason in particular. Uh, but the neat thing is, in the Elder Scrolls, that's what people think orcs are, because of, uh, reasons. Uh, but the Orsimer are actually so much more than that, uh, for a notable visual difference from most other fantasy orcs, or orcs, is that the Orsimer are Mongolian. Uh, like I said, Bethesda does not stick to the Northwest European setting. Not only do the orcs stand out by being inspired by, uh, Mongolian culture and iconography instead of being cultureless monster men or British, they also stand out by just being people. Yeah, they're a race with a very warrior's honor base to it, but besides all that, they're just dudes. These are normal-ass people with normal-ass jobs, like being the most famous chef in the Empire, or running a library at the College of Winterhold, or just being a bard. These are very much not typical fantasy orc things to do, if you haven't noticed. Even orc warlords like Gortwag, at first glance, yeah, they do seem like big-ass scary warlords who are causing trouble for the surrounding kingdoms and wearing a loincloth. Uh, but really, he's a highly intelligent strategist who is mostly attempting to regain land that by the time Daggerfall, uh, the game he's in, uh, takes place, is definitely historically orc territory, and he's doing all this just so he can surrender that territory to the Empire, and in doing so, they'd have to acknowledge his kingdom's legitimacy and the orcs as people's legitimacy. Overall, elves in the series stand out a lot because they're just people. Yeah, most of them live longer than humans, but they aren't, you know, close to immortal, and most of them are just like farmers or run stores. Dragons. 
dragons. You know, so dragons in the Elder Scrolls are something special. Uh, now, dragons being sentient, talking beings isn't anything new by any means. Although, I feel like it wasn't exactly super common before, even though it appeared in, you know, a few very notable works. But now I feel it's sort of come back as almost the standard in recent years. Uh, like, if you got a dragon, it talks, it's basically a giant person. Uh, the Elder Scrolls really loves that aspect of the series. Like, they could practically be considered just another race on Tamriel. I mean, if a dragon can hold down a job as a soldier of Tiber Septum, then who's to say a dragon can't run a bar? But also, dragons in the Elder Scrolls are a little bit more than just talking, flying lizard people. They're gods. Well, not exactly, but not exactly not if you catch my drift. The dragons in the Elder Scrolls are a direct creation of Akatosh, the dragon god of time. They're little shreds of the god turned into separate but connected beings. They're extremely immortal, with just a sort of innate connection to their bodies that allow them to come back to life much easier than any other being in the Elder Scrolls. They're also uh, assumedly sexless beings who are all men, so yeah, no baby dragons and dragon eggs, none of that. Honestly, with how reclusive dragons became and how inherently magical they are, it makes me wonder if they even need to eat food. And, uh, yeah, there's also the uh, other thing everyone who's ever played Skyrim has heard at some point. Yes, the dragons are not typical fantasy dragons by typical fantasy terms. Instead, technically, they are considered a similar, often related creature called wyverns, because dragons are supposed to have four legs, and in the Elder Scrolls, the dragons only have two. Uh, but that's just another twist, right? I mean, hey, you know, it's different. Also, probably because they already showed off a dragon in Redguard by the time Skyrim came out. Oh, also, the dragons can do a lot more than just breathe fire. They can, like, you know, rip open portals in reality, summon the undead, make it rain meteors, uh, shove stuff really hard. Oh yeah, and uh, they can also violently rip your soul out of your body. Yeah, I don't remember Smaug doing that one. We also have lycanthropy to talk about, you know, werewolves, people turning into big-ass wolfmen, or in much lamer instances, people just turning into wolves. Uh, it's actually fairly normal in comparison to everything we talked about for the Elder Scrolls, uh, except for the part where it's directly tied into Hercene, the Daedric God of the Hunt. Uh, but besides that, it's just turning into big-ass wolfmen with a few variations, so I probably wouldn't mention that if that's where it ended. No. Werewolves are just the beginning. We've got plenty more where that came from. Most probably notice the werebears on social Solstein while playing Skyrim. And very cool people will know that you can just straight up be a were-boar in Daggerfall, uh, but there's even more we have. There's the amazing were-bats of Valenwood, which definitely are the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Also in Valenwood, there's the were-vultures, which just sounds so lame that I already hate it. On the much cooler side, there's the were-lion that can be found in a few places, and there's the were-crocodile. And best of all, there's the were shark that ESO keeps mentioning, but refuse to show because they're cowards. And on top of all these goofy ass forms and cool ideas, there's a few weird variations like werewolf lord, who are just really special people to hair scenes, so they get to be this sort of weird wolf person that mixes with your real race. So you can be a weird wolf lizard. Uh, and then there are just the beast men, which I didn't even know about till researching this, who are basically just like rabid monster people who are <laughs> kind of like the wolf man. I really like that one, actually. And to cap off this simple video, I'd like to talk about the thing that I don't think enough people give the Elder Scrolls credit on. Uh, I've already mentioned before, but it's the fact that it doesn't remain within the standard Northwest European setting. In fact, the only places that are totally applicable to that is like Skyrim, and that's like really north on that Northwest scale, and High Rock, which is where it's definitely most applicable. There's tons of fantasy series out there that have these other places that, you know, aren't the typical Northwest culture, you know, but I find that most of of them still end up being 100% focused on this Northwest European setting. Sure, these other cultures will exist, but they'll be far off and you won't actually learn that much about them. You only talk about them when some exotic character shows up, but not in the Elder Scrolls. No, High Rock is the place where it's most applicable and also is like the most underdeveloped and boring part of the series. Hell, the most dominating culture in the series, the biggest province in the series, is the Imperial culture, is 
Cyrodiil. And while, yeah, that's a European setting, it's not Northwest European. No, 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 the Imperials are Italian. Well, Roman. And while Oblivion didn't do as good of a job as it should have representing that Roman culture, ESO definitely has. Like, dear lord, some of the outfits they have uh, on the Imperials are just asking to have them assassinated by the Senate. I just think it's a complaint that I hear often about the general landscape of fantasy. Uh, and then people will come around and they'll pull these obscure series from 19, uh, you know, 62 out, uh, which is all fine and dandy, you know, shine light on your favorite series. But, like, you could just show them a copy of Morrowind and it'll change the life. <laughs> Uh, and with that, this video is over. You should look at my social medias. I make art, a lot of it. Yeah, I don't care. Subscribe if you want. I don't care about that part.